Hello everybody who's watching. Um, I'm Kyle Clark and uh, I want to talk about some misconceptions a lot of people have. So you might have heard that gender and sex are the same thing, or that gender dysphoria is a mental disorder, or even that transitioning has a negative effect on trans people. Well, all the things I just said are wrong. Like, it's kind of insane how long they are. Problem with these misconceptions, though, is that they form the building blocks of an even larger and more harmful misconception. That misconception being that trans people aren't valid, which is just wrong on so many levels. So I want to explain why these misconceptions are wrong and how the truth behind them proves the ability of trans people. But before we leave the station, let's talk about what is a transgender person. For those who don't know, a trans person is someone who is someone whose personal and gender identity don't comply with the sex they were born with. So this could be someone who identifies as the other gender, could be someone who has gone through gender reassignment surgery, or even someone who identifies with no gender. So that out of the way, let's get started. To understand why trans people are valid, we first need to understand the differences between sex and gender. So, what are sex and gender? Sex is the biological difference between males and females. So those would be chromosomes, hormone preference, and external and internal anatomy. Gender, on the other hand, are socially constructed roles, behaviors, activities, and attributes given to a gender. So for example, if I were to go to a wedding, I would wear a tuxedo because that's what men wear to weddings. But why do men wear them to weddings? Do we wear them because of our brain telling us to wear them for biological reasons? Or do we wear them because our society has trained us to think of gender in such a way which tells us that men wear tuxedos to weddings. When you see that gender doesn't necessarily have to be based off of sex, due to some societies having more than two genders. For example, many Native American tribes have a third gender called two-spirit which combines the activities of men and women with unique attributes like how they dress. Next thing I want to talk about is how gender dysphoria is not a mental disorder. So why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. That's what the experts say. The American Psychological Association the American and Medical Association, American Psychiatric Association, the Human Rights Campaign, the American Academy of Pediatricians, the United Kingdom's National Health Service, and, get this, the United Nations all agree that gender dysphoria is not a mental disorder. And, to put it frankly, it doesn't fit the definition of a mental disorder. According to the American Psychological Association, a psychological state is only considered a mental disorder if it causes significant distress or disability. And well, a trans person's gender dysphoria isn't what causes them distress or disability, but social risk factors, like finding affordable resources, such as counseling, hormone therapy, medical procedures, and 
social support. We can see this best when it comes to the chance community's high suicide rate, which is caused by risk factors like gender-based victimization, discrimination, bullying, violence, and being rejected by family, friends, and community. We can see that as these risk factors due to a report done by the Trans Pulse Project, which looked at trans youth who received strong parental support and were not rejected and found that the likelihood of a suicide event went from 57% to just 4%, a fraction of the original percent. Last topic I want to talk about is how transitioning has a positive effect for trans people. So, why am I saying that? Well, I give you the Cornell University's huge meta-analysis on transgender people and the effect that transition has on their mental health. So you might be wondering, what's a meta-analysis? You might have never heard of that. Well, a meta-analysis is a type of study which studies studies. And yeah, you might be wondering why you, you would do that? Well, you would use a meta-analysis to find the consensus in the field. So the Cornell University's meta-analysis, they looked at 56 studies, found that 52 of them found positive results and only four found mixed results or no results. None of the studies found negative results, showing that the consensus in the field is that transitioning has a positive effect on trans people. More evidence of transitioning having a positive effect is the Q-Race Expression Study done by the American Academy of Pediatricians, which found that when trans people took Q-Race Expression at the mean age of 14, then cross-sex hormones at the mean age of 17, and finally he went through gender reassignment surgery at the mean age of 21, and, and found that all people who took part in the study reported happiness at the same level or higher than six gender people. So by now, you're probably wondering something. Why is a 17 straight Sits genuine, punk, is here talking about trans people. Like, I'm probably the last person you would imagine to give this speech. Well, it's really simple. It's because it infuriates me that I'm here. The fact that I'm the one speaking here shows no one else wanted to do this. So if I did it, no one would have. So I saw this as a chance to make a difference for a community that's been oppressed for the whole of our history. And I encourage all of you watching to take the step needed to fight oppression.